<laughs> well, you know, Rich, better than sounding good, I look marvelous. You do. You lose know, some weight. It's better to look good than to feel good. <laughs> You're losing a lot of weight. That's awesome. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Phillies Talk Podcast, one of the longest running, I believe it's the longest running, independent show talking about the Philadelphia Phillies. It's Rich Baxter, and I'm joined by my co-host this time. How you doing, Matt Veazey? Good, Rich, and... uh you know, it doesn't matter if we're the longest running or whatever, as long as you're, we're the the best, you know, yes. one of the one of the best. You know, we're we're providing some quality entertainment and information to the to the good folks in Philly's uh, land out there. Philly's land, yeah, that's true, and uh, that's awesome, awesome way to look at it. Uh, we're still in the game here, talking Phillies, and uh, we made it up to the All Star break. I wanted to try to do a show, you know assessing the team up to the all-star break but we can do this a little bit now uh even after the all-star break and we're taping this show on july 19th 2023 and uh phillies um look like they're in a pretty good position now um as we're talking about july 19th yeah well uh you know they've uh 27 and 10 rich since uh, a loss on narrow loss on June 2nd in Washington, 27 and 10, 17 above 500. They won four straight. Uh, they're in their by percentage points into second place. Now uh, the Marlins are slumping a little, little bit. So the Phils have moved into second. They've got a, one of the wild card spots back. So uh, there's only, if you really look across all of baseball, there are only a handful of teams that have a measurably better record than the Phils. And I'm not talking about like a San Francisco who is only like a game ahead of them in the loss column or something like that. Uh, it, they are a game ahead of them in the loss column. Arizona tied with them in the loss column. Uh, these are the other NL wildcard teams. So uh, only teams like, you know, Atlanta, uh, the Dodgers and even the, the Dodgers are only three ahead of them in the loss column. So, you know, say Atlanta, Baltimore, uh, uh, Tampa Bay, still Texas, you know, these are teams that are, uh, you know, measurably ahead of the, where the Phillies are right now. But otherwise, you know, the Phillies are right there with everybody. So. Uh, the Braves are still probably the the uh, the gold standard right now, but they the Braves have lost three straight. I think the Phillies have picked up uh, four games on the Braves over the last week. So I'm not saying we're going to catch them. You know, we're still uh, nine and a half games behind them. We're ten games back in the loss column, but it's a loss. It's a long season, and uh, that's a big hole to make up. It's a talented Atlanta club. But uh, the Phillies have talent, too, and I think if they can make the right moves, uh, maybe they can close the gap and make it interesting before we hit the September push. Yeah, it's been um, sort of a miracle to me. You know, we've seen that roller coaster ride we talked about on previous shows. Uh, the first few months of the Phillies are up, they're down. But they've definitely found a groove in the last two weeks leading up to the All-Star break, now getting out of the All-Star break. And um, they're facing the Brewers, which is a tough <clears throat> opponent. They're in the uh, NL Central on top right now, just virtually an identical re record to the Phillies, just about. And, um, you know, we've seen a lot of good offense from the Phillies. The pitching is that question mark to me. Can we carry this through? Is pitching going to improve as time goes on for the Phillies? And can they hold on to this um good time so to speak that we've been experiencing from this team well the bullpen uh when you say the pitching i think you really are emphasizing the starting pitching being yeah. consistent the bullpen has been the best bullpen in baseball in a number of statistical categories pretty much since uh the middle of april so you know we're going on that's three months now so it's it's pretty much a done deal that the phillies you know have a strong bullpen craig kimbrell has been you know Born again hard here in Philadelphia, uh, all star. He, he's been a revelation. Kimbrel is five and 
315 ERA. He's got 16 saves. He's only allowed 22 hits in 40 innings. Um, he's got a 60 to 16 strikeout to walk ratio in 40 innings, 60 strikeouts. He's he's a, got a 13.5 strikeouts per nine. So Kimbrell's been fantastic. Uh, Matt Strom has leveled off a little bit uh, he, as a lefty out of the bullpen. He, he had a fantastic start to the season, especially when they were using him as a uh, as that opener kind of thing. Uh, he's coming in relief a little bit lately. He's had a couple of uh, hiccups, but overall, he's been very effective for them. Uh, you know, Gregory Soto, again, he... You know, he's had his moments uh, uh, blowing things and then uh, having having good in- innings. He, he piggybacked uh, really well off of Aaron Nola yesterday. Uh, they're, they've been doing really good, and they've been doing it without the guys who they thought were going to be their primary right-handed and left-handed setup people, which is Sir Anthony Dominguez and Jose Alvarado out injured. They're hoping to get them back soon. Uh, Alvarado, uh, I believe he had a PRP injection in his elbow. He's been feeling a lot better. So hopefully in the next you know, week or so, they'll get the clearance for him to begin throwing and we can get him back uh, by August. Dominguez, I believe, is supposed to start a, a rehab assignment any day now. So the Phillies bullpen could actually improve still. So it's uh, the bullpen's been really good. Uh, Taiwan Walker, he's been, I think, everything they could have hoped he would be when they signed him as a free agent. They only expected him to be like a three or four starter, and he's got 11 wins. His ERA is four, which is perfectly fine over 19 starts. He's allowed fewer hits than innings pitched. Walks a few too many batters. Uh, that's been his main bugaboo. But overall, he's been you know what they signed him for. Ranger Suarez, uh, he's been pretty good for the most part since he's come back from injury. Christopher Sanchez, as the fifth starter, he's had a hiccup uh, or two, but for the most part, he's he's done what you want a fifth starter to do. It's really those two guys who we count on to be co-aces on this team, Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler. Uh, they're not pitching poorly, but they're not pitching like aces either. And we really need Nolan and Wheeler to step it up a little bit here uh, in the second half. They're, both of them, their ERA is uh, right just above the four mark. And we expect those guys to be, you know, a run per game less than that. Uh, but they are both fewer hits than innings pitched. They are both more strikeouts than innings pitched. And Nolan's right about the same uh their strikeout to walk ratios are fantastic so some of this, these secondary numbers on nola and wheeler are fine it's just you know they need to tighten it up a little bit they nola has given up 21 homers that's been his bugaboo uh, and it's a big bugaboo yesterday and yesterday's start when he was sp- Fantastic for the most part against Milwaukee. He gave up no home runs. That's going to be a key for Aaron uh, moving forward. Uh, Wheeler, it's been a couple of innings here and there, you know, where he's where he's had a hiccup, and that's you know cost him. So, just hopefully, Nola and Nolan Wheeler can step it up, and and that's that'll that would really go a long way, Rich. Yes, absolutely. And uh, before I go any further, and we still talk about uh, starting pitching. Just wanted to uh, thank my special guest uh, last week for coming on to the show, uh, Baseball and the Law, down there in Miami, Florida. And um, Louis Schiff, great guy. I uh, wanted to send out a thank you for uh, coming on, talking a little bit about the Marlins and how good they've done this year. So thank you again, Louis. But back to our show here with Phillies Talk and um, – Matt, just as we came onto the air here to tape this show, if there is such a thing as air, um, Phillies have announced a press uh, release on Andrew Painter, and it's not good. I'm going to put it up on the screen here. Yeah, uh, Tommy John. I guess we all uh, kind of thought that that would eventually happen. Yeah, he's been having the right elbow um, pain and uh upset in this since March. Um, so it looks like he's got an appointment there 
uh, this coming uh, 24th of July, Monday in Los Angeles, uh, the surgical wonder there that does most of these baseball players, Neil Elitrashi, I think, Elitrash, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce his name, but he's the guy that usually does these things. And it looks like Andrew Painter will not be on the Phillies for quite some time now. Yeah, you know, Rich, I always, I thought that that was a, you know, a little bit of a stretch to begin with. Uh, a 20-year-old kid, uh, teenager, you know, at the time when they were talking about him coming up, coming up and starting for the club. Uh, let's just face it, this isn't the end of the world. Uh, assuming the Tommy John surgery is successful and he has a good rehab and there's no reason to believe that it won't, uh, Tommy John surgery is... Uh, almost always successful these days. It's not a slam dunk, but it almost always is successful. A large number of the pitchers come back from it even stronger than originally. Uh, as long as his surgery is successful, as long as he has a good successful rehab, and that's what we that's all we got to worry about right now. Get him a step one, successful surgery. Step two, let him get into his rehab and hopefully no setbacks and he just keeps improving through his rehab, which is going to be a year long process. So we're, we can basically forget about Andrew Painter, except for the occasional updates of successful surgery and his rehab is going as planned. If next summer, you know, a year from now, we're talking about, you know, he's doing really well in his rehab. That's what we want to see. Uh, and now what we're gearing towards is he, he still has the talent. He still has the same mental makeup. He's going to come back uh, hopefully stronger. And by spring training 2025, it sounds like a long way off, but it really in baseball terms is not. You know, we're in the middle of 2023 already. Spring training of 2025, he'll, he should be ready to go. And he'll only be 21 years old still. 21 years yeah. old. Yeah. You know, he doesn't turn 22 until we get into the season in April. So even at tw if he makes his debut sometime in the 2025 season, he'll be 22 years old, Rich. You know, so I'm fine with it. You know, it's not important right now for the current state of this team. And, you know, right now what they need to do is let's get a fifth starter in here. Uh, let Christopher Sanchez maybe become a sixth starter. Uh, let Noel and Wheeler get a little bit more rest as we go through these dog days of summer at the end of July and August. But uh, I think getting a, a veteran starter in here who can eat up some innings, take some starts, uh, I think that'll be an important thing for this team. Yeah, and that's been the talk around Sports Talk Radio in the Philadelphia area uh, in the past couple of days with the trade deadline just looming uh, less than two weeks away now. And uh, ESPN had an article uh, just yesterday with um, some quotes from Dave Dombrowski. And it says, quote, they're really making decisions the last weekend before the trade deadline. And, quote, you wait as long as you can. Uh, he went on to say, you always want to make the playoffs because once you make it, we know anything can happen. However, and I'm just speaking for me, you have to be realistic with yourself. Do you have a club that's good enough to advance or in your heart? Do you really feel that way? It's an important distinction. So he does speak the truth on, you know, whether a team uh, has that mojo, so to speak, to go into the playoffs and, and do something. Uh, I think the Phillies do. He didn't really say um, too much in specific about the Phillies, of course, but he says every market is different. Every owner is different. Every team is. I think most fans and, you know, pundits like us are in agreement that the Phillies are a suitable team to bulk up and build up. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. And I think that Dombrowski knows that, too. He knows he has a contender. He's not talking about the Phillies here. He knows that he has a contender. He just went to the World Series last year. Uh, he knows the talent. He sees the record. He sees what their record has been since June 2nd. Uh, this is an absolute. This is a uh, this is a World Series contender right now to Phillies. And they need a couple of pieces. They could use uh, a, a more 
a veteran run producing type bat who's willing to come off the bench. They could use uh, that that kind of veteran starting pitcher. Um, but uh, that's really all they need at this point. And I think what he's talking about more is trade partners. There aren't a lot of you know teams that are surrendering yet. There are maybe a handful of teams. Uh, if you look across baseball, some of the guys, a couple of uh, teams in the AL Central, Detroit, the White Sox, Kansas City, um, Oakland, of course. And then uh, over here in the National League, you've got Washington and Colorado. Those are probably the only teams that are surrendering right now. And that's that's only like a half a dozen potential trade partners. And then it becomes, well, among those teams, do they have anybody that A, you want, and that would make any kind of a difference, and B, that those teams would trade because those teams are building, so they're not going to give up their like better young pitchers who they're hoping will be part of their their mix. So do they have a veteran pitcher who they'd be willing to move who and they'd be willing to take you know a relatively inexpensive price in exchange for that pitcher? Uh, that's possible. You know, uh, but the Phillies are going to wait. I don't think they're going to be the first team to jump. They're going to watch and and see some of these other dominoes fall because there'll be somebody out there and where you might not have to pay an exorbitant price to get an arm that'll help you. Think back to 2008, Rich, when we bought in Joe Blanton from Oakland uh, for three prospects who in the end ended up being nothing, those three prospects. I, I think a couple of them at the time, maybe uh, if I if I recall the names, I think Josh Altman might have been in that deal, but there were a couple and they had an infielder who was pretty good that was in that deal, but they were, they were pro- fringe prospects who thought they might be something. And they turned out to be nothing, any of them. And we got Joe Blanton who, you know, we didn't need him to be a world beater. We just needed Joe Blanton to come in and pitch well, stabilize the rotation, give us good starts uh, every five days. And he did just that and then continued it into the postseason and continued it for a few years here. So you can get an arm like that, a, a mid-rotation arm, somebody who would be more like a Taiwan Walker level uh, arm in here, I think at a relatively inexpensive price, but as Dombrowski said, it might be something where you just kind of, you know, feel it out a little bit. Uh, you're going to have to wait, you know, for the market to settle a little bit. Teams aren't going to jump. And uh, unless you can get one of these bottom feeding type teams to send you that kind of arm at a reasonable price, you're not going to see, you know, uh, any big moves until, as he said, Maybe, you know, the the three or four or five days right before the trade deadline, which is uh, we're talking about a week from now, you'll start seeing things really pick up. Could yeah. somebody jump sooner than that? Uh, sure. Somebody could jump sooner than that, but I don't know that it'll be the Phillies. And going back to 2008, 2007, um, that time frame, 2009, a lot of players wanted to gravitate to a team like the Phillies because they won the World Series in 2008. It was like a magnet for good players to want to be on the team. Now, the Phillies did lose the World Series last year, but they made it to the World Series. So um, I didn't see that sort of spill off that runoff uh, so far from a lot of players uh, as far as, oh, I got to, you know, I want to be on the Phillies team sort of, um, but I'm sure that they know the Phillies have the capability of doing it again. And to, to get to the world series or deep into the playoffs is the goal for most MLB players. That being said, I think we agree that, you know, the Phillies would love to and like to get a great pitcher on board. That's our opinion. I, I believe that's my opinion, but there's been other players bandied about. I want to have your opinion on them. Number one's got to be Shohei Otane. Uh, the Phillies were in the top three in Las Vegas. They're taking odds on it of the top three teams where Otani might end up. I believe it was the Dodgers, the Yankees, and the Phillies as being the top three um, teams that Otani may be on. 
What would the Phillies have to give up to get an Otani? Do they need an Otani? They already have three, two hunt, two players that are three hundred million dollar players, and we've never seen that before on the Phillies. What's your opinion on Otani? Otani's not coming here, Rich. That, that's my opinion. Uh, Vegas has the Phillies as one of the three top teams. I, the top I three, just, yeah. I, I find that hard to believe. I, I got, I'm going to have yeah. to look that up for myself because I, yeah, didn't, I mean, I haven't I, seen that, and I, I do get. An email I don't think from, that I don't um, think that Otani. When you talk about uh, maybe Vegas might have put that out for some reason, I don't know. But yeah. uh, from everything that I mean, I read a just like you. I read a lot of baseball, and I've been reading all all the top pundits, experts, um, you know, national writers. You know, also, and I have not heard the Phillies. I've heard a number of teams. I've not heard the Phillies at all mentioned with Otani. Uh, for a lot of reasons, like you said, the financial reasons. Number one, uh, number two, I think that they're. I think that they're. You know, Otani is a difference maker, but the price that it's going to take to get Otani, I, I believe that to get a show to Shohei Otani, you're going to have to give up two or three of your top prospects. And then you're going to have to also give up a couple of major league ready young players. I think that's what the Angels are going to ask for. And I think that at least right now, rightfully, they're going to ask for that rightfully because of what he's doing, you know, uh, he's he's going to be a difference maker if he gets dealt. And I think that the more interesting question to me isn't should the Phillies trade for him or can the Phillies trade for him or will the Phillies trade for him? Uh, I think I've already answered that when I tell you. The Phillies will not trade for Shohei Otani. That's I'm going to just say that flat out. They will not trade for him. I believe if he gets traded, he'll get traded to somebody like the Yankees or even, you know, it's a, I'm, I'm not going to say it's a shame. It's a shame for them and their fans that the Mets haven't started to win a little bit because I think he would, the Mets would be a, a, an attractive target because that owner is willing to spend the money. Uh, they have some good prospects that they could throw together. And, uh, you know, N New York's a big market. I think he would like that. But see, it's really tough, Rich, because Otani, his own record, is saying he wants to win. You know, so he, he isn't going to want to go somewhere. I don't know that he's going to make a big deal about it for these next two months. But he's not going to sign anywhere long term where he doesn't believe he has a good chance to win. And you look at baseball, where does Hotani have a good chance to win? Uh, you know, there aren't a lot of guarantees in baseball. Who's been winning regularly for years, right? You're going to, and who has the money to pay Hotani who's been winning regularly, or, or it looks like they're going to be winning regularly. When I, think about that i think of course you think about the yankees because they're always big money they're always looking for big names you think that they're going to win at some point uh they usually are a contender i look at a team like boston i look at a, a place like uh texas which is spending money now which is putting a lot of good young talent together i look at seattle who's having a rough year uh but but they have that kind of same mix, I think, as Texas, where they're willing to spend the money and where they have it, where he's going to have a chance to win because of that division. Uh, places like Houston, uh, I just these are places that I think have the money and have the resources where they can deal them, and that maybe they'd be willing to. I just, I just don't see it happening here because of the other Phillies obligations and because we can get it done here in Philly without paying that price financially and talent wise. Uh, yeah. There are other players that we can get in the short term and then go into the market in the off season and get somebody else who will help us get where we need to go. That's for sure. Um, it, it's MLB network that mentioned the Phillies as um, one of the destinations that Otani may end up not for the long term. They were saying, um, but a nice destination, like you said, Otani wants to win. Uh, Dan Plesak, uh, MLB veteran and longtime MLB network um, announcer and commentator says um, 
quote, they have some enticing young players and Dave Dombrowski is from the old school mood mold. Rather, they get a taste of the World Series last year and they want to get back this year. If they're in the rental category, I think they're in. So uh, not so sure. <laughs> oh, you know, that's would... only that's only Plesak saying yeah. that it's like the like MLB network says MLB network didn't say that Dan police said, it. you know, in the same segment, Greg, Greg Amsager said the Phillies aren't going to do that because they have too much money tied up in other contracts. So this is not a MLB network, you know, anointing the Phillies as a favorite. This yeah. is just Dan police you know, mentioning yeah. them that, you know, and, 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 the reasons he mentions are valid. You know, Dombrowski's a short-term guy. Usually he's willing to give up prospects for that kind of thing. So uh, yeah. would they would they give up like a, that big a package? I don't think that the Angels would take a prospect package for Shohei Otani. I don't think the Angels would take, say, you know, who do the Phillies have? So let's say you give them your top prospects. Say you give them Andrew Painter, Mick Abel, Griff McGarry, and Johan Rojas. You give them all of them, maybe Justin Crawford. You give them your top five prospects for Shohei Otani. I don't know if the Angels would take five prospects. You got a Painter who's now he's going to, you know, Tommy John. So that's a question mark. Yeah. Would they be concerned about that? Sure. Abel, he's walking a lot of guys. He hasn't shown he's ready. You know, McGarry's been up and down. So I don't think that the Angels would make that deal. They right. would want somebody like Bohm, Stott, maybe both of them. In that kind of trade, I don't oh. see it. Do you? I don't do think it's going to happen. I say it's not going to happen, Rich. You've heard it here. <laughs> Phillies are not getting Shohei Otani. Do, do you move you along? Them? Not you, but fans, move along. You're not getting Shohei Otani. Do you deal an Alec Boom? Throw him in into that mix. Um, I don't know. Uh, Otani is that once in a lifetime player. They they say his uh, contract's going to be somewhere in the five hundred million dollar range, five ninety five maybe. More expensive, by the way, than what it took to build Citizens Bank Park. That's astounding. Uh, of course, we go back to 2004 money for that, but it's astounding that you could almost build a stadium uh, like Citizens Bank Park, have it standing there, and that's what they would need to pay a guy like Shohei Otani over a certain amount of years, probably 10 years. I think I've read that figure being bandied about. Okay, so Otani uh, probably not coming to the Phillies, but if he does, I swear, I think ticket sales will be, you won't be able to buy a ticket to a Phillies game uh, through the regular ticket. Well, office. they're already close to a sellout most games, Rich. I mean, they're yeah. at like 39,000 I mean, plus every game. Phillies fans would be a fever pitch if we uh, if we got Otani. Sure. It would be, sure. It would be like, absolutely. Uh, I don't know, Christmas in July. It's not happening, but absolutely, Rich. I'll, you know, I'll be dancing. I'll dance a jig on the next <laughs> podcast if All they right. sign Otani. That's a bet. If if we get him, you have to do that. Um, mm -hmm. So moving on, uh, let's talk about this name just real quick because we only have a few minutes left in this show. Uh, Juan Soto, would you do anything for him? Anything? Sure. But it depends on what anything is. You know what right. I'm saying? That's that's what it comes down to with all these deals. What is anything? You know, right. uh, I wouldn't deal like Boehm Stott type guys. I wouldn't deal Painter Juan Soto. But you know, prospects are not on the trade. Is would they be willing to take guys like Abel McGarry? Uh, you know, I I'll, I'll I, I would deal them because and the reasoning, Rich, is I think he's shown he's proven the talent is proven offensively at least. Uh, and I'm not concerned. I don't know. People keep, I hear this thing. I, I read this stuff out on the internet, like uh, attitude or mood or whatever. Uh, and I saw a really good point uh, made today that uh, this is a guy that all you got to do is go right into your own clubhouse and talk to Bryce Harper and Trey Turner. Uh, they have really good knowledge of Soto, whether he would fit in, you know, with the Phillies. Uh, this is a good clubhouse. Uh, they have a good camaraderie. They 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 worked in a guy like Castellanos, you know, who has a reputation of being a little, you know, moody and uh, 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 introverted, you know, more than extroverted. So uh, I think that Soto would fit in fine here. Uh, I guess I, I guess he'd play left field. You know, Schwarber would DH. Uh, Harper plays first base. I mean, there's a way to make the mix work. So. 
it yeah, really yeah. comes down to yes, I would take Soto. Comes down to the price, though, Rich. You know, I wouldn't pay any price for Juan Soto. I'd pay a lot more of a price for Otani, but again, it, the Otani thing comes down to could you get him to sign here for five years? You know, uh, yeah. Soto. You know, Soto's already under contract. I, I, I think he would fit in with Harper and uh, Turner. So I would say yes on uh, on uh, Soto, depending on the price. Yeah, I would say. I'd say give me a price. If if somebody's going to say, do you think Soto? I say, tell me what the price is and we'll talk. If Otani goes to either the Yankees or the Dodgers, I'll lose my faith in baseball because they have the highest payrolls uh, over the years. Um, I just, you know, to for them. Shouldn't lose your faith in baseball, Rich, because that's, you know, that's that's the most likely thing, you know, but. uh, Yeah. You know, at the end, it's the Yankees. You know, whenever there's yeah. like a big free agent, money's involved. You're going to look at the Yankees. And yeah. when and the thing with Otani with the Dodgers, I think, uh, I just don't know if Artie Marino would sign off on moving Otani to, you know, thirty miles away to L.A. I don't, I don't think he would do that. They're they're kind of rivals, even though they're not in the same division or league. That's true. Well, plenty of baseball left. Uh, I know there's been talk about the the wild card. I don't even start thinking about the wild card till September myself. Uh, the Phillies have a lot of games mixed in with the National League East coming up in the final two months of the season, f- final three months of the season here. Uh, if you want to count October, <laughs> the Mets, they finish up with uh, at the end of September and the first of October. They play Atlanta. Uh, a few times um, they play Washington four times. Um, so they have a lot of games. I mean, they have six games against Atlanta coming up in the final few months of the season. Uh, so it should be interesting. I mean, the Phillies have nowhere to go, but up they've been uh, going up. As you said, they're just attained second place. Can they make a run for the division? Let's let's leave it with that. Uh, with less than a minute to go, you got thirty seconds. Can they make a run for this division? Yeah, I think they can, Rich. But I don't think it's really you know they're they're in a hole right now. I think the biggest thing is it, something would have to happen with Atlanta. The Phillies are. I think they're going to continue to win, but uh, I don't think Atlanta is going to collapse that much. It's possible. So we'll right. yeah you know, we'll see. We're going to root for it, right? All right, let's go Phillies. Uh, follow Matt at fight at. Uh, Phillies, Phillies Bell, Bell. Bell on Phillies Twitter. Phillies Bell on Twitter. Yep. Yep. And me at Fighting Phillies on Twitter as well. Follow us at fightingphillies.com as well. Thanks for tuning into this edition of Phillies Talk. And we'll talk to you again real soon. Go, Phils. We're out. And I will I will text you because it's going to cut us off. It's just going to. Sounds delete. good. All right. Nice to All see right. you, Matt. You too, Rich. We'll You're do this again great. soon.